Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and the shop, and welcome Mara back to the shop. What's up? We are converting this Harrisville loom uh, from four treadle direct tie-up to six treadles with lambs. Great, which is already done, we're shooting the intro after. But the other thing is, her mic was on mute for part of the video, so please be patient. It picked up from my mic. Anyway, onward and upward. Okay, Mara, would you kind of explain what we got here and what we're doing? All right, this is a Harrisville uh, jack loom. It is the, I think it's 22-4, uh, meaning that it's got a weaving width of 22 inches and four treadles. Uh, we are going to be, ta-da, using this conversion kit to convert this to um, a, a, what you call it? Six hunters. Uh, it's going to have, it's still going to be four harness, but it's going to have six treadles and it's going to have lambs, so it will not be direct tie up. Direct tie up means that it's a one to one ratio to the harnesses. If you want to depress two harnesses, you have to use both feet. Um, with lambs, you can tie two harnesses to a lamb and only use one foot to depress both of those harnesses. More um, creative fidgeting, or, right. weaving. I don't know how to weave. She does the weave. So, uh, so this is the kit from Harrisville, and uh, we uh, are going to be using the instructions that they sent with it to um, to do the conversion. So here you go. So the first thing we got to do is tie off the harnesses up here, and uh, then we'll go to the next step. And a lot of this is going to be uh, uh, us figuring it out as we go. Yeah, along. so a lot is going to be, gonna be uh, a little few cuts and some time lapse because of. Um, of the, we're learning this as we go along. So okay. first thing I'm gonna do, Mara's gonna tie those off. I'm gonna pull all the parts out and start inventorying them. Yeah. Do you have some Velcro for that? Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. That'll do. But it says, disengage the harness cables from the nylon cords at the S hooks on the prop on the side of the castle, pass the wire skewer through the cable loops. There's a wire skewer? I don't think it's those. Maybe it's in there. To keep them from tangling and in the proper order. There's a wire skewer, uh -huh. looks like. And there's eye eyelids and chain. Some of the stuff we Is don't need. Is there another wire skewer in the other chain bag? We can mm, improvise. No. But a lot of the stuff you don't need to use because it sent you a whole new set of... Uh, Chains. Uh, no, look here. Oh, whole right. new set. So you don't yes. use all of them. That's done. Okay, now it says to remove the treadle cords. From the treadles? But down, yeah, remove the cords down here. Okay, so, so you have to basically unknot those. Yeah. Um, you, you didn't tie these up. I did tie them up. No, they, they want them up, I guess, up, up, up. So now, you look at, oh, wa okay. watch. Oh, ha, ha, ha. So while okay. you do that, I gotta go get my eyeglass thing. Okay, well, actually, if you could hold it up, it would make it easier for me to do that. Uh, you know what? Hold it up. Of course I cut it too short. Okay, up, up, up. Safety wire, just like an airplane. All right. All right. Let me go get my eyeglasses things. I'm gonna need those. Spike. What's up? These knots. Oh, um, I have a marlin spike. Oh, it's too big. Uh, I think there's something small that I could. Oh, you know, I have it an all. Yeah, an all would do it. What's it say after this? Where you at? Uh, removing these. From oh, the we, they, we're supposed to put check marks on these. Okay. So I'll get a pencil. 
So, remove the four nylon cords and the pulleys and uh, disengage the harness cables, leather pieces. Tie the harnesses up. We did that. Disengage the harness cables, leather pieces, and the limbs. That's what I'm doing. And nylon cords and S hooks on the side of the castle. Press the wire skewer through the cable loops to keep them from entangling in the proper order. That's what we did. Okay, remove the nylon cords. Pull. Nylon cords from the pulleys and the treadles. That is what I'm doing now. Yep. Unfasten the backside braces. We're not there yet. Yep. This might take a while because these knots are on there real good. So we have started the disassembly process. Uh, we've cut some cords that Mara wants to replace anyway. This is the warp end. It's just dropped to the floor and it had, the instructions have check boxes, kind of like, you know, your boss wants you to have for your to-do list at work, which I don't have. So. We've unfastened the backside braces and, and, drop, this. and drop that down. Um, remove the beater assembly from the loom. We've already removed the beater assembly. It's in the living room. Right. All right, so now we're going to go on to more time lapse as we start continue taking this apart and as we will stop at the time lapse uh, in certain places to show what we've done. Maybe we'll do some close-ups. And then we'll show the assembly, hopefully, in a little more detail. I can see where there's going to be some cutting and drilling that's going to go on here because we're going to have six of uh, six treadles instead of four. Mm -hmm. And there's no screw holes to hold. These blocks here hold the treadle bar, which is this longer one, in place along the back of the loom. And right. they pivot on this to thing. To make room for the extra treadles. Yes. Oops. Yeah. Don't be dropping the parts, Kevin. All right. So that's that. Let's move on with... Um, Remove the middle back castle brace, part 3B. Onward. In this step, I've removed this back brace that goes here. There's only one shape like this, and here's a replacement that's going in its place. So I remove that. Luckily, these screws came out real easy, and they're you know, the old slats, you know, straight slots type, type screws, which I'm not happy with. But anyway, that's just me. So that's come off. That goes there. What's next? What is next? Remove the front lower castle brace. Huh. Got to figure out what that is. I'm wondering if we were supposed to move, remove these guys. Is there a part number on the one you took off? No, and there's no diagram. Uh, look in, wait a minute. Because there is no corresponding front part. But this has four holes in it. This has two holes in it. Huh? Well, look. See this? It says uh -huh. these two holes in that hole there. And this has four holes in it for holding these. Okay. So I believe that's the right part. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. So they want us to remove the front, which is over here, lower castle brace. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what they're talking about. Lower castle brace. Take out the pulleys and the pulley rods, so it's that. And hold the pulleys and rods and screws aside. They will be reused. But this is, if that was the front castle brace, this is the back castle brace. Right. So do we need to take these guys off? It says, remove the middle back castle brace here. Oh, I think that was this one. Remove the front castle brace, 3B. Okay, so let's put this one. All right, so I made a mistake, I think. Yeah. This one was not to be removed. These two are to be removed. So... Let me uh, put this back on. Okay, let's let's look at this again. See, this is they don't have a diagram, which really pisses me I off. I know that's why we're doing this, though, is because people want to know how this works. So we're figuring it so out. So remove the middle. Yeah. Middle back castle brace. Watch the 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 pulleys and everything. Right. Right. Wait a minute. 
Remove the, uh, uh, yeah, pulleys and rods. Yep, you're right, the pulleys and rods. He's the side. Okay. Now we remove the front. front, which is side screws. So I guess these are called, this is the castle, these are called castle braces, I guess. Yeah. The instructions don't come with a parts breakdown as far as this is part 3B, this is part 4B, this is part well, 6B. The parts that came with the, with the upgrades kit are labeled, but the parts we're taking off are not labeled. So where, are they guess where are they labeled? A little bit. I don't see a label on this. Oh, well, the trunnels are labeled. Because I, there were labels when I, on the very end, on the end of each one? Other end? I know there were labels. Not there. Well, let's not worry about it. Let's, yeah. let's get the parts out and do the next step. All right, so that's the front castle brace off. Um, so this whole segment here is all apart. Uh, I'm putting the screws back into the castle brace, the front castle brace, because they're a different type of screw than the others, and I don't want to mix them up. These are going into end grain, so they're rather longer. What is next? Attach the new middle back castle brace, 3B, that one, to the castle using the four one and a quarter inch screws that you took out earlier. Okay, question is, this way or this way? Because look at the holes. Uh, that is a good question. Oh, look at the diagram. There's a diagram. Oh, there is a diagram for that. No. No. Thank you very much. Oh, it uh, looks like those holes are yeah, go up. Looks like they go up. See, um, let me turn it around. Here, here, and here. I don't think so. See that? That, that, I think that's the pin. So you think it goes this way? I think it goes that way. Uh, yeah. See? There's a pulley here and a pulley here. Yeah. And there's another pulley here, but it's at the top. Oh, wait, that hole is on the 36 inch loom only. Oh, damn it. All right, well, I guess Wait, we'll... wait, wait. So the part number 3B is toward the feet, and the three and a quarter inch holes face toward the front of the loom. Part three quarter inch three holes. B. Where is the part number? There's no part number. No, no, give me a second. 3B, right here. Okay, so 3B. So is, that goes this way. Is, wait a minute, what did it say? 3B toward the feet. So that, that, that 3B goes down. Okay. No, I mean, these have to go towards yeah, the feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the 3B, which is here, goes down. Yes. Okay. Which is what we, what we surmised in the, in the first attempt. Yep. Okay, so There's that... There's no clocking these screws. Sorry, honey. We can't clock the screws. <laughs> I am so angry. I want to clock the screws because I'm that guy. If this was a boat, we'd be clocking the screws. Or lights or whatever. So now, there's these four pulleys that were splayed along this piece, as you can see, like that. Now, there's four, the four, eight, of however many there are, 12 of these pulleys, they actually go in three locations instead of the four locations on the old piece. Mara is sanding the, uh, the metal shafts to get some of the rough, roughness off of them because they were... The instructions do tell you to do. Yeah, if they're rough, go ahead and sand them. So this one goes here. Oopsie. Oopsie. That one goes there. And there's a third set that goes. So we don't need one of the rods. We, uh, no. Not with wood. Not with that oil. No. You, what, you'd, what you'd want to use like um, paste wax or. Uh, Mark, would you help? Would you line this? Put this in the. Huh? This has got to go in that hole right there. Look over here. See that hole? Yeah. It's got to go there. Okay. Cool. Uh, do you mind if I go get the paste wax? I've got some uh, paste wax over here. Okay. So name dropping, the paste wax we're going to use for the shafts, uh, Mark Spagnolo, the wood whisperer, actually uses this 
for driving screw. No, it wasn't Mark Spagnuolo who showed me that. Yes, it was Mark Spagnuolo when he's showing how to put in these uh, in inlet hinges that come with brass screws, but they come with a steel screw to, part to get the hole started and get it all ready so you don't break off the brass screws. He was using Renaissance wax to get the initial screw and then the brass screws in the wood. So here you go. Okay. There's that. So the next step after Mara gets those in place is um, this is the new front, uh, what do they call it? Front brace, front guide brace goes and captures these shafts in place. And now I know I'm doing all the talking, but it's okay. That's why <laughs> she does like to be on camera occasionally. Get out the four screws we need. You can extrovert for me. I will extrovert for you. All right. There's, uh, there's, there's those. Okay. So. Got it all greased up. Uh, let's see. Where does this one go? Uh, there's a hole. No, we only need three. Oh. We don't need the two. Well, four. then I didn't, I didn't sand this one. So. That's, it's not, that one doesn't need to be sanded. Oh, no. That one's good. You can put all some right. grease on it if you want. So, uh, she, Mara read the destruction and discovered that the um, part number goes down on these things, but with this one it's rather obvious from the pinhole location. Remove the floor brace, floor, floor brace 5D with treadles from the breast assembly. This guy. This guy. Okay. So our next step is removing this base piece of wood here that has the treadles attached to it. And I think what we're gonna, this is where we're going to have to do some drilling and, and screwing to put the new treadles in place. Well, uh, is there a new one of these or not? Is that my view? Excuse me, no hole drilling. I was an idiot. They have a new one. <laughs> no, you just, you know. Voila. Oops, we got two more attached. Oh, we didn't uh, pull those through, yes. So here is the treadle thingy. Now I have to move stuff out of the way because we're going to assemble this on the table saw. Attach the new one using the same screws that you just removed. Be sure that the number 5D faces down. You may want to rub some soap onto the screw threads to make driving them in easier. Well, yes. we have the... We could use that, yes. So this, we'll assemble this first, yes? Uh, it doesn't tell you to. Any reason why we can't? That is a good question. Uh, there are other steps that you have to do with the treadles. Okay, good. So we'll just put these in place. I'm, I'm going to keep the screws, of course. Yep. I'll put these in, we'll just put this in place and then we can fasten everything and assemble it on the loom. Mm -hmm. Hold on. So we got that part on. One of the microphones was turned off, so you have some f funky stuff going on. But Mara's going to, what's the next one? Uh, lamb and harness installation. Okay. Uh, there is a diagram for this. Please remember that as you work from the back of the loom, the right side of the loom is on your left. So we will be working from the back. Uh, and the left side is on your right. The castle with the HD brand, voila, is always the left castle. You may also want to release the warp braces from the castle and lower the warp assembly out of your way as you proceed with the following steps. Well, it's already out of the way. The warp okay. assembly is already out of right. the way. Right. Uh, anyway. Um, locate the following items for one complete lamb to harness assembly. One adjustment chain, no clips on the ends. Two S-hooks, one lamb cable, one lamb, and eight screw eyes. There is the diagram. Lambs. Yes. Screw eyes. Yes. Eight screw eyes. Um, okay. Uh, 
drive six screw eyes into the small holes along one edge of the lamp. Well, we have those here. Screw them down only the length of the threads and in such a way that all the eyes are parallel, these screws you clock, to the uh, length of the lamp. I use, get the clock screws. Use soap on the threads to save your fingers. Okay, we've got wax. We can do that. So the four lamps have their little eye eyelets in them. See? And they're ready to, I think they're ready to go in. This is the lamp cables. Mm -hmm. And it says, working from the back of the loom, push the middle loop of the lamp cable up between the right castle, just the, that one. The middle loop? Middle loop. Oh, I see. Middle loop. Okay. Uh -huh. so, so right where? castle and the first bank of pulleys. So is... Okay, so we do, I believe, let's, let me do that, okay. So it's I think we're not reusing those. Does it go all, it doesn't go all the way up to here though. I don't... No, it can't. No, it doesn't. It, it goes up to these S-hooks. So, so I believe we're taking these oh, off. But I'm going to yeah. leave them there for now and we'll replace one at a time. So which one is the fourth? Which one is the, f we're working from the fourth one, right? Right. So you push this up. Wait a minute. Let's see. First bank of pulleys. Correct. Here we go. And this is number four? That is number four. Okay. Mars taking the cable, putting up uh, through, connecting it to the uh, shuttle thing. The S-hook. S-hook. <laughs> And that goes down underneath the first that, pulley. The, underneath the first pulley. Over the next pulley. Lost focus again. Over the next pulley for the short length. Uh -huh. Over the next pulley. Oops. Oopsie. For the long length here. And then connects to the opened S hooks. Uh, uh, so hooks, uh, uh, hook eyes, whatever. Uh, yeah. On the lamp. And we'll close those up after everything's connected. Yep. What we just did was uh, install these shed bars onto the harness, uh, onto the treadles. Not sure what they're for because I don't weave. Mara can tell you more about that. Um, and we put in all these harness things here. Here's the uh, harnesses, mm -hmm. harness cables in place along the pulleys, the new pulleys we put in. And they go up and move the harness, move the harnesses up and down. Okay, there are no other cables. I'm checking the parts list. Okay, so oops, I'm gonna put the treadles in now, and the new treadle bar is in treadle base is in place. Right. Metal bar. Bar spacers. And this is this is left and this is right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's obvious because the holes. They mark them. Well, the holes too. Okay, but they also <laughs> mark them left and right. Yeah. So uh, if we put one on and then string it and put the other one on. Yeah. All right, let's get the screws. We're going to put the screws. They're right here. Yep. Okay. All right. Treadles are in place. Woohoo! Um, locate the snap chains and snap at least one to each shed rod on the treadles. Lift each treadle and snap the other end of the snap chain into any eye above that treadle. Okay. All right. Those are hooked um, up now. Yep. Yay! Progress. Adjust the height of the harnesses so that the top, I think we can release the top, the harnesses now. All right. Um, well, here, let me just cut the thread and then we'll take off the safety wire. Yeah. Yes, I used aircraft safety wire to hold this up because I'm crazy like that. Because it was that. there. I use safety wire for a lot of things. Now you can adjust these up and down as needed with these things. Here. Yeah. So it wants this eight inches down from what? Um, 
So the top of the harness bars is about eight inches down from the top of the castle. Make these this adjustment. Have, these have to be eight inches down from the castle? From the top of the castle, so eight oh. inches down from here, and we adjust it using these. So let's put a temporary mark in there. Yeah. Yeah, that, those are way too low. Let me do on this. Okay, you got it. Okay, so okay. that gives us a temporary mark of where the tops of the harnesses have to go. And I'll leave Mara to adjust this. She will play that game. I think we can take these out. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Huh? Ah, they, they slipped out on this one. So it's a good thing we had the wire through there. Yep. Oh, uh, you have to do, wait a minute, that's one side of the harness. Mm -hmm. That Oh, look at this. Yeah, I think this is, so earlier I was looking to see whether they included any chains for the top of the loom, the, the harness cables, I mean, and they did not. So I may send off for those. Um, I made these uh, harness cables myself, um, and... The original um, or factory, factory uh, OEM parts are adjustable at this point and mine are not exactly. I could uh, cut this seizing and adjust them a little bit myself. So, uh, oops, I'll deal with that later. I lost the S-hook. I lost the S-hook, yes, thank I'm you. I'm going to close the S-hook up on the Yeah, on that the might be nice. So, Mar used her wonderful maritime skills to make these because we were sailors for a yes. long time. Um, but it basically, you don't have to have uh, any special cord. You just go to Home Depot and get nylon uh, cable. Um, sash cord. Sash cord. This uh, is, this is um, one eighth sash cord, which would be perfect. Melt nylon. the ends and then uh, whip them to form a loop. Uh, Kevin can take a picture and insert it in the thing yeah, later. Yeah, I'll do that. And um, it, it's, it's not that hard to do. And you don't need anything special to do it. But I may send off for the factory ones. Oops, I already did that one. Uh, factory ones anyway, just to have something a little nicer. We'll see. Okay. Yep, that's even. How many chains did I do? One, two, three, four, five. Five okay. links. Five links. Mara is standing on her apple. We have an apple that turns into a half apple. And people who deal with movies and TV will know what an apple or a half apple is. And it, was, it just defaulted that way because it's a box we've had in the shop for quite a while. So I cut the knot that goes through here. And now this cable is too short. But I've got leftover cable that I cut er earlier that uh, was on the treadles. So I can just repurpose that. That, that's the, uh, the warp break that holds this tube from, right. from jet moving backwards and or forwards when, little, you're, when you don't want to. The ratchet and pawl here. It's a ratchet and pawl. Let me get over here. Right. It's a ratchet and pawl right. that stops the warp beam from and, rotating so that and, when you, you can keep tension on your work piece. And you can see that's too short now, so I will replace it. Let me go. I'm going to go singe this. Okay. You'll note that over on the, uh, on the take up uh, the, the beam, there's an identical ratchet and pawl assembly that locks this in place so that and you can crank this one and that tightens everything up and the, the one in the back locks the warp beam so you keep tension on your threads that are going through the shuttle and um, you weave. I keep saying I don't know how to weave, but I don't. And here it is in the living room where Mar uses it, sitting in her weaving chair and sitting there with all its new parts ready to go with Ollie the Wonder Dog, or Weaving Dog. So Mar has a warp. Already wound out. Well, it wound up, that's gonna go in the warping beam. Mm -hmm. This is her, basically her magic mathematical instructions on how to do all this and what goes where. Mm -hmm. And the box is a box that Mara made to hold all her weaving gadgets to go along with the loom. And as it says on the other side, weave beautiful things. Absolutely, and until next time, make great things out of wood. And weave beautiful things.